Okay, guys, we're going to talk really quick about FDA compliance while my house is still somewhat quiet. Um, so basically, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, they have rules in place for companies like ours on how we talk about our products. Um, these rules have been in place since the 1930s. It's not anything new. It's just a matter of like people not listening, um, not following the rules. So um, that's why you have, you know, vitamin pills that are filled with wood chips and weight loss gimmicks and stuff like that. Like, it's just, it's not good. Um, so Young Living, like, we want to follow the rules because um, if we're not following the rules, we're going to get in trouble. So we want to be following the rules because we want to make sure that our products and our oils are still available to everyone. Because um, if not, you know, the FDA is going to shut us down because we're talking about things we shouldn't be talking about. Um, so... Basically, when we're talking about our oils, we are talking, as Sarah Harnish would say, we're talking in the land of wellness, not the land of sickness. Um, like even I'm being sick is not even a good place to be. So we just we don't even want to go there. Like we we don't want to talk about anything curing diseases, you know, fixing symptoms or you know things like that. Like we're just we're not going to be down there. Um, our oils and our products are to support wellness. And so that's where we want to be. That's how we want to, um, talk about our oils, like thieves for immune support and RC for respiratory support. Um, those kinds of things. Um, Ningxia Red to support your digest, digest, <sighs> flip, digestive system. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so and, like, sometimes people ask, like, well, why don't we just get approved by the FDA? Well, in order to do all that, in order for us to be able to talk about our oils like that, it would have to be approved as a drug. And if our oils got approved as a drug, the only way you could get them is by getting a prescription from your doctor and going to the pharmacy. And we just, we don't want to do that because we want to be able to have them, you know, whenever we want and however we want. I want to, I want to be able to order the ones I need every month. Like, I don't want to have to go get a prescription for it. Um, and then you also have the issue of like, you know, the pharmacy potentially using a generic brand that's not as good quality. Um, so that's where we, I mean, because like for the oils to be, um, tested as a drug, it's not really an option, or it's not an option that we want anyway. Um, so therefore, we have to learn how to talk about our oils compliantly. And that's just like what I said, the rule of thumb is just not talking about it to cure diseases, not talking about it to like fix different symptoms of things, or talking about them to support and stay well. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically a good rule of thumb is to anything that you can sell, that they sell at a drugstore, don't talk about your oils to replace it. So, like, if, like, sunscreen they sell at the drugstore. Don't talk about an oil that's like, oh, I use this in place of my sunscreen. Don't do that. Um, if you, I mean, if you want to talk about your personal testimonies and uses, I would encourage you to talk to somebody face-to-face -face about those kinds of things. Um, the FDA is, like, really watching all of our social media pages, our Pinterest boards. Like, if you have a Pinterest board about oil stuff, delete it. Just delete the whole thing because that's what I did. I had a whole Pinterest board called Oily Mama and I just pinned all kinds of essential oil recipes and DIYs. Just delete the whole thing because unless you can guarantee that every single link and every piece of wording on that website that you pin from is FDA compliant, it's no good. The FDA will look on there and they will find it and you will get in trouble. Um, so I just deleted the whole thing. But on your Young Living virtual office, in your member resources, there's a button called Shareable Graphics. You click on that. There's tons of really pretty, professionally done, compliant graphics that you can pin to your Pinterest boards for oils. So I went through and I just pinned everything and saved everything. Downloaded it. I was like, all right, this is great. I've got all this cool, professional-looking stuff to use now. So... It's, I mean, it's not, don't, don't get upset and don't get worried that it's not going to work because, you know, your oil, your business or however you're doing things like it's, you can't do what you were supposed to, like what you were trying to do. It's going to be okay. We just got to learn how to tweak our language a little bit. That's something I had to learn. I know I've talked to some of you guys, um, in non-compliant language. And so I have to go back and be like, okay, like this is for, this is supporting this. Okay. It's not curing this. Um, 
So yeah, so I mean, but we'll learn together. If you want more resources, I can send you the link to Sarah Harnish's um, compl uh, FDA compliance video. Also, anybody in my downline, I buy them this game plan book, Strategy Guide from Starter Kit to Silver. I buy them this training book. We go through it together, um, as well as Getting Noticed by Lindsay Teague Moreno, and I love her so much. So that's just what I wanted to throw out there about FDA compliance. It seems overwhelming, but once you just kind of set your mind to how we're supposed to be talking, how we're viewing our oils, it's it's just so much easier. So if you need more information, let me know, um, and we'll just go from there. Remember, we're living above the wellness line, okay?